Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and all podcast catchers and YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, everywhere you listen to us. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian, and as always, everybody's favorite horror writer, Nicole Six. Hello, good afternoon. And you're as excited as I've seen you in a long time. I'm all smiles. This is a lovely guest. I, I enjoyed the last time we had him on the show, and I'm happy to have him on the show again. Well, uh, he doesn't remember it, but uh, if you know who this guest is, you'll see why. <laughs> uh, he actually was a little late because uh, apparently he was a little too chill and relaxed, if you know what I mean. But he's one of our favorites, uh, you know, one of my comedy heroes, and it's such an honor to talk to him again, Tommy Chong. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, who are you again? <laughs> I'm Dark Bob. Dark Let me Mark. Go to the intro again. Dark Mark, the goth comedian, and uh, I thought you were darker, Mark. Uh, but Tommy, it's 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 always great to see you. And you know, if, if people don't know who you are, uh, you better uh, get that Google working because everybody everybody yeah. knows who you are. Yeah, and everybody do. likes in a society where we're encouraged to hustle harder, sleep less, and work more. You may find it difficult to relax and be in the moment. Performance issues in the bedroom affect millions of men just like you and I. And finally, there's a discreet tool that works. Meet Eddie, the smarter treatment for erectile dysfunction. Eddie is a clinically proven, easy-to-use, wearable device designed to help men of any age strengthen and maintain their erections. Call 737-301-6111 to speak to a licensed nurse or visit eddiebygiddy.com and be the best version of yourself. eddiebygiddy.com, where innovation meets ED, and we have a special discount for you. If you use our code DARKMARK20 in checkout, you get 20% off your order. Uh, be the best version of yourself. Try eddiebygiddy.com and use our code DARKMARK20 and get 20% off, except maybe Cheech. But everybody likes you, uh, regardless of age, well, economics, they like me, they, they, they like me more than Cheech. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. now, now, I wanted to start off with this because, well, actually, as except we my last wife. Time, except my wife. She likes Cheech. Your wife likes Cheech more than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was just to piss me off, so. Nicole, I'll give you the first question once again, because I know you have lots of questions for Tommy. Uh, okay. Um, what is the best part of smoking weed? What What is the best benefit it brings to your life? It calms the mind. And I, when, you have a, when you have a calm mind, I mean, you know, people say, it, oh, I, it's forgetting. But it's not forgetting it. it is your mind is sort of like it, it's, it loses its grasp on those things that it hangs on to. Um, sometimes out of habit, uh, sometimes out of fear. But when uh, you uh, get high on uh, THC, uh, your mind relaxes. And when it relaxes, then it sort of like becomes open for other messages and other impulses that we're trying to get in, you know, that you had blocked and uh, like hunger, for instance, you know, you don't <laughs> realize how hungry you are until you get really high. And then you go, Whoa, I'm really hungry because all your senses, are, you, you know, your brain uh, is aware of all your senses, you see. And so what it does in a way, it clouds the brain, but it, in a, in a better way, it unclouds the brain. It, it it removes all the negativity, maybe. maybe? I was going to yeah. say it's kind of like meditation in a way. It's its own form of meditation, right down to the breathing, the in and the out. Exactly, exactly, and that's why uh, you know the mystics, the the evolved, the gurus, you know the the highly evolved ones. They can they got total control of their mind. And uh, and it's been written in scriptures in the Bible uh, many times that if you keep your mind on God, then he will perfect that which concerns you. Mm. In other words, 
if you're a writer, then you really write. <laughs> if you're an artist, you do your art. You're an actor, you act. Uh, if you're a singer, you sing. It, but it it helps you perfect your profession, and uh, and that's just by having a thought, your thought on on God, on the muse, on the higher power, whatever you want to call it, nature, whatever you want to call it. But having a pure thought, because when you think of God, you're really having a, a pure thought, because God represents total purity. And so when you have pure thoughts, then then it, it, it's a big highway for all the good stuff to come pouring in, you see. And that's what pot does. And if you believe in God, God created marijuana. Well, of course, he created everything. Yeah. So uh, I, I wanted to clear something up because last time we uh, interviewed you, I really went into the breakup of Cheech and Chong because I was very curious how that happened and why it happened. And after the show, Nicole's like, it's such a shame they never got back together. But you did. How did that happen? Well, we got back together, uh, I guess, 05, 04, 05. We, we got back together before. We were supposed to do a movie before I went to jail. But really? because I went to jail, that sort of stopped that. And then uh, uh, while I was in prison, uh, Cheech came out a couple of times to, uh, uh, to write the so-called movie we were going to do when I got out. But when I got out, I didn't like what was written, and so that fell apart. And then we more or less broke up. Uh, but then after I got out, Cheech was kind of, wasn't acting, you know, there was no jobs or whatever. And uh, and so we had a meeting to see if we were, we could get back together again. But it, <laughs> the meeting didn't go so, so well. But it, even though I, I hadn't seen him for a long time. And so I, I, I texted him. I said, even though, you know, we're not getting back together, it was nice seeing you. Well, my son intercepted my e my email because my son kind of has control over my computer because he showed me how to do it. And he made right. sure that he had control. So he, uh, uh, you know, he, he raised my email and put his own email in there where he says, I'm really glad to be that we're getting back together again. and that We should be rehearsing and blah, blah, blah. And then he told me after my son told me after what he did because Cheech was on his way over for the rehearsal. And we, <laughs> and we had a, we had a, wasn't much of a rehearsal. It was like, uh, Hey, okay. Looks like we're doing this again. That was it. We're back together. I, I remember. I remember hearing about. It. And like I say, it was you know when you guys officially announced you were back together it was uh, after you were in jail. And uh, yeah. And and uh, you know it was like you know it was it was like a, a, a big rock band getting back together. To me, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, it it was, was twenty years. It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. We've been apart that long, and then uh, <clears throat> then we got back, and and we worked. Right up until the pandemic, you know. And so, then, what's your relationship with Cheech like now? He, you know, he's a, still a Mexican. You know, uh, <laughs> I can't get past that, but I will eventually. You know, you don't say. It's it's pretty good. You know, he's got his own art gallery now, so right. Uh, so I'll be. If it ever opens, he postponed the opening about five times now. <laughs> well, because of the pandemic, it's, though, right? Well, I know it's a Mexican opening, too, you know. <laughs> oh, well, no, it's okay. Yeah. Well, 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 Tommy, this is this actually a good segue. Let me show you this, because I and I want to get make sure I get the name right. Um, uh, as I said, everybody's been cra uh, going crazy because uh, we're, we're get, having you back on. Kareem John sent this. I'm going to share my screen, and I, ho I uh, hope you can see this. Can you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I Kareem John. Let me uh, exit. Oh, sorry. Nice, nice. Yeah, he, he did a picture of you and Cheech Chong. Very nice. And I will, uh, if you'd like, I could send that to, to your son and uh, so you have a copy. Of I'd love one. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. And uh, so, it, I mean, it just show, goes to show you, I mean, you, you're inspired, you've inspired all sorts of arts. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we're, we're NFT too. You know. To oh, wait, you got Chichi Chong NFTs now? Well, it's uh, uh, homies. The homies they're called, <laughs> and they're Cheech and Chong homies, and and they're on the market. You, you know, remember homies, uh, Nicole? I remember homies. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheech and Chong homies and NFTs. That sounds great. Yep. Yeah, it's being sold, and we sold out the first round, and now they're looking to keep making more money. So it's, it's doing good, you know. Great. I, I, yeah. And I do have to ask you, uh, I, uh, because like I said, I uh, I I want to um, I want to give Cheech's due. Uh, what is it about Cheech that made you funnier? Uh no, Cheech is probably funnier. Uh, depends on the bit, you know. Depends on the. You guys are so much funny. I mean, you're both funny guys, but together there's just magic. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean we're we're perfect together. We always were. He just got tired of uh, me fucking with him, you know, because that's <laughs> that's all I did though. Every movie, <laughs> you see, you see, it's it's it was amazing. Uh, but then he, you know, he wanted he he evolved actually, and. Uh, mm -hmm. He evolved into a, a fine actor, you know, very fine, you know, and and a cop, you know, with uh, Nash Bridges, he played right. a very credible, credible cop. Yeah, very entertaining, you know. He, he that's what he yeah. wanted to do. His dad really was a cop, and, and Cheech, uh, Cheech, you know, like dads and sons, you know, uh, Cheech was very proud to be able to follow in his footsteps, even if it was just on television. But especially because it was on television, right? Because Cheech really, uh, you know, personified that whole profession, you know, and and it was such a, you know, I I don't know how Oscar the dad felt about it, but I'm quite sure, you know, Oscar deep down inside was well, that's my boy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's amazing who gets to play cops. So you got Cheech, you got Ice T, you got all these like yeah. notorious people, and now they're playing cops. Yeah, yeah, because uh, there's no difference. Just uh, th there's just a line, and you're either on one side or the other. That's all, you know. Right. Just like prison, I, I I heard they caught the that the the girl and the guy that escaped, you know, from yeah. Alabama or whatever it was. But uh, but I understand totally, you know, uh, her falling in love with the guy because. Uh, when I was in jail, you know, the, the guards were doing just as hard time as the prisoners, you know, sure. and, so, and we were just one big family. It was just that one had a uniform and another had a different kind of uniform. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you get love letters in prison? I don't, I don't want, Ooh, I know you're married I, to, to lovely Shelby, but. Uh... Not love letters. I got fan mail, which I kept. And I, and I, I intend to do a, an art project where I, uh, uh, I'm going to feature the the letters somehow, you know, that's in the project. It wasn't there wasn't one woman that's like, hey, I'll, I'll bust you out. And, oh, uh, more than oh, oh, that kind of thing. <laughs> <clears throat> well, with the prison I was in, you could walk away if you wanted to, right? You know? Especially on the weekends, you know, uh, if you can get by the count, you could uh, be gone for the weekend and come back, and they wouldn't know about it. You know, you know who uh, Tommy Selma was, Nicole. No. The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yes. I do remember that. We discussed that last time. Jordan right. Belfort. Right. And he, he, the reason that there's a book and a movie is because of Tommy Chong. Well, because I helped Tommy. Him. I remember. I, 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 I gave him some good advice, and he took it. And uh, because he's a brilliant genius, uh, he, what, I, what I told him rang true, and uh, he proved it. He, he proved it, my uh, theory. And, and there yeah. were tennis tennis courts on the, at the prison. Yep. Yeah, they had tennis courts, and Jordan would play every I guess day. He could have done was put you in the movie. <laughs> What's that? I, think I, would have, I said the least he could have done is put you in the movie. Like he it wasn't have, up like, to him. He would have, uh, you know. But and he'd work with to, Scorsese. Yeah, it was more up to Scorsese, but they they uh, they didn't need me in the movie for sure. You know, that was such a good movie. Oh it was a God. great movie. It's an amazing oh movie. Oh, my God. And the people, the way they, they cast, the girl, the wife, and all. Oh, incredible. And uh, I have to ask you as an expert, uh, the depiction of uh, of Ludes, is that accurate? 
Well, you know, that, that was one of the reasons that he uh, he clicked with me because I told him when I was teaching him how to write, I said, you got to write the most of, you know. So if you get high, you got higher than anybody ever in the on the planet got high. And, and Even Tommy the, Chong. Oh, oh, especially Tommy Chong, you know, because I could <laughs> never, I mean, with me, when I got high, I just don't move, <laughs> you know. I, I I go nowhere. I stay where I'm at. Uh, but but Jordan, you know, uh, he told me a lot of those stories, and then he embellished on them. Mm-hmm. And then you got DiCaprio, what was such a genius, you know, yeah. make it even okay. more bigger, you know. So uh, that's why that movie worked because it, it was big. It was a big movie, right? But have yeah, you ever? Been... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, is there a creative project you haven't done yet that you'd like to do? Like something, you've had such a big career, but is there anything left that you haven't like done yet that you always wanted to do? Yeah, yeah, I wanted, I, and I'm going to do this. I wanted to be head of a movie studio, like a mogul. Amazing. And and, I, and I'm going to be. I, I, I'm putting a movie company together called Peace Pipe Pictures, and uh, I'm going to be the mogul. And uh, we're we're going to have a budget of about a trillion dollars, because I'm going to write movies, produce movies that will uh, uh, fix, cure the homeless situation, will uh, uh, help the immigrants at the border, big time, and help America, uh, give give people uh, health coverage from the get go, schooling, um, all that good stuff that we need to create a society that will uh, sustain itself, you know, get away, not get away totally, but, but redirect the, the greed, the greed impulses. And so instead of hoarding, you're sharing and you're purchasing, but you're also dealing and everything that needs to move the civilization along because we're only here really for one reason and that's to repopulate the planet you see in other words that's the most fun of of being a human is being able (laughs) to repopulate you know and and then as you repopulate you have to have caretakers for every age of the the infant as it grows into uh, adulthood and then that cycle continues and the reason we have wars is so that we can develop uh character uh see you can't develop character when everything's going really well the way you develop character is that you put the character to a test and Mm. uh, the harder the test the greater the character and of course not everybody uh, becomes at the top of the class but that's what we're striving for that's why we have conflict and because we live in a very physical universe and the law of the physical universe is basically conflict, you know, and the opposite of a physical universe is a spiritual universe. And so check this out. What's the opposite of everything? Nothing. That's right. That's how big the spiritual universe is. It's so small. It really disappears it's too small to to even imagine and the reason is is that a physical universe has everything it has life it has uh, oxygen it has hydrogen it has chemicals everything a spiritual universe only has a feeling and that feeling is love because love is knowledge and so in the spiritual universe, you have all the knowledge there is in the entire physical universe. And it's all in the spiritual universe. But in order to gain, understand what that knowledge is, you have to have a, a being in the physical universe to learn everything you need to learn. And and as we evolve, we learn more and more and more. And eventually... Like the Bible says, we all become gods. Hey, man, you're blowing my mind. I really should have smoked a joint before the show. <laughs> Isn't that well, a Thomas, trip? You were, 
<laughs> that's, really, that's so well, deep. I'm I think your ambition and your plan is amazing, and I think it's great for you to give back to the world on such a massive level. So, bravo! Oh, not only give back, but create create a a, a project that self sustains. Mm -hmm. Because you're you're producing you're producing humans really beautiful good humans out of this out of this thing you got actors you got writers you got creators you got artists you got the best of everybody and and they're all working toward the same goal which is to create a planet that is so livable that uh, there's no need for conflict. That's uh, hopefully we get there. I've been, I, if I had trillions of dollars, I give it to you. Um, <laughs> no, I don't need it. But what okay. you can do, what you can do eventually. One of the reasons, one of the ways I, I will be raising funds will be uh, adoption. I want to. I'm starting a, a Tommy Chong. Join the Tommy Chong family. Okay. And all you have to do is fill out a form and send in a and a, a form a fee, a fee, and then you mm -hmm. get on you get on the family newsletter. Okay. And and whatever events comes up is all all uh, announced, and we have family get-togethers uh, oh, wow. on every ma major holiday, especially on my birthday, May twenty fourth, and uh, we're going to do a celebration. You know, May twenty fourth used to be Queen Victoria's birthday, and they used to celebrate it wow. in the in well, the I'm sure it technically still is. Well, they, they yeah it is, but they used to celebrate it with fireworks. Mm -hmm. All over, all over the Commonwealth, all over Australia, Canada, you know, uh, the Great Britain, and and so when I was seven, eight years old, when I realized I was born on the same day, whenever the we'd have fire on my birthday, they'd have the fireworks. I would pretend it was all for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. So we're gonna have fireworks for your birthday this year? Oh, big time, big time. Oh. Not 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 me, but I mean, eventually we will evolve to that. I, I to when I used to do fireworks, I used to we light a sparkler and run around. That was the extent of it, you know, because because I was too freaked out about explosives and the firecrackers. And I was never one for getting an eye put out or having right, a finger no, blown off. You know. Well, everybody be sparking one off for your birthday. I want to wish you a happy early birthday. Uh, Thank actually, you. funny you should mention that because my friend's birthday, my friend Kevin's birthday is this month, and I was on your website, and I saw that you uh, sell Tommy Chong uh, special birthday candles. Oh, yeah. yeah and I'm going to get do. those for him. Oh, that's uh, so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they have uh, rolling paper, in, I believe, and yeah. And they're available on Amazon, so it's, I thought it was... Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, what do they yeah. call it? Uh, yeah, I forget what they're called, but they're. Uh, I I saw them. I have them, uh, but I can't remember what they <laughs> what anything about. But them. it's it's great. So they get four of them, and they got rolling papers. It's great. Uh, but uh, speaking of uh, of create of um, creating uh, beautiful human beings. I mean, your children, Radon Chong, yes. Robbie Chong, yes. uh, very successful actors. Uh, Marcus Chong is very successful actor. Was in the yes. Matrix. Yep. Uh, yeah. You didn't technically create create him, but he's your son. And uh, yep, yeah. Well, he adopted me. He was actually the first Chong to adopt me, rather than me adopt him. And uh, well, how did that happen? Well, he just took my name and uh, told everybody that I was his dad, and uh, I didn't argue about it. <laughs> yeah, I said okay, I, I, I'll go for that, and uh, it worked. It worked for a while, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I I don't mind. And he is a hell of an actor, and like you oh, said. So wait, you know, so he was he isn't really your adopted son, or no? Oh, no, really? Not, I not didn't know fiction. that. Not, not what, a fish. Uh, no, Nicole like I said, he adopted me. I've known his mother since okay. she was she, she was three years old, June, and 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 the brother. Uh, so you're your family yeah. friends? Oh, family, way back, way back. June, June was. Uh, yeah, she's an old dear friend, and and then then she hooked up with uh, Marcus's father. He's a, a television reporter in Seattle, uh, mm. a very cool guy, and uh, and so they had they had Marcus, but right. Marcos uh, when he said that he was my son, he he got more action, you know. <laughs> and so I said, "I'll go for it, man." You know, uh, the the call and fans, if you're not familiar. 
you remember the pilot of the Nebuchadnezzar in, in uh, the first Matrix? Yes. And then yes. in the sequels, they had somebody else doing that. That's Marcus Chong. Oh. Yep. And uh, on Wikipedia and every reference site, I've, it says that Tommy adopted him, but now we get the, full, the real story. You love him <laughs> as a family friend, but you didn't adopt him. No, he adopted me. And, he adopted and, and that's fine. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm going to give everybody a chance to adopt me. So, so I'll, I will, uh, pull, I will yeah. be Dark Mark Chong very soon. <laughs> yeah. Does, yeah. To adopt me. Uh, sorry, yeah. mom and dad. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'll give everybody a Chinese name because that's that's their uh, that's what makes you an individual. See, every right. when you have your own Chinese name, like I do, Chiang mm -hmm. Hong is my my Chinese name. When I when I tell that to a to a someone that a scholar that knows how to write it, they write out my name and then they tell me the history. See, my name has history. It goes all the way back to the beginning of the families, all the Chinese families. And uh, like I'm in the same family as, as Chiang Kai shek and uh, really, uh, yeah, as far as I, I, I can remember a long time ago. But yeah, and so when, when, you, when I adopt you, I'm going to figure out a way to give everybody gets a Chinese name. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But uh, when your daughter Ray Dom became such a big star in the 80s, how proud were you? And speaking oh, of beautiful children, what a beautiful can, woman she is. Can you imagine? Well, you know what happened with Ray Dawn? She was about 14, I believe, somewhere around there, maybe even younger. Anyway, she, she said, Dad, I want a scooter, you know? I said, well, then Ray Dawn, get a job. <laughs> 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 because uh, you know that was Cheech and I just barely started making it. You know we're still you know living you know very very frugally as as right. you would say. Uh, and so Ray Don went and got a job. <laughs> it was a a ten thousand uh, dollar McDonald's uh, commercial. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> just like that, boom! And uh, she never turned her back, and she never got that scooter. By the way. No, I was going to say, she, she'd get a really good scooter for $10,000. <laughs> but you know what? I got a scooter when I uh, retired from when they quit the 70s show, when right. they wrapped it. And uh, and now Ray Don has it. I, I gave it to Ray uh -huh. Don. He finally and earned so, that scooter. So she, <laughs> she has a scooter. It goes with her. She also has a camper. And so she's got a scooter and a camper. And Oh, yeah. She's she's happening. Well, she's I did just... Uh, let let her know we're big fans because uh, I, I will. and and uh, my friends were like uh, came across something about her on the internet like wow wait Ray Don Chong what happened to her I'm like I don't know but she uh, and we came across her Instagram and she's apparently she's doing great so no she's working away you know she's she's a worker yes you know? that, that <laughs> apparently because you told her she couldn't get a scooter that's why <laughs> get a job <laughs> and you know that was the only one I'd said that to I didn't have to the other ones. Right. You know, uh, the, but I wanted them first to get an education. But if they couldn't get an education, they get a job. You know. Sure. Yeah. Do something. You right. know. Right. Do something to make some money. Uh, you know, and uh, and to help people. That's all. Exactly. That's all. I don't and, care what it is. You know. And I see that, that Ray Don has been doing that. Looking at her Instagram page, she's doing a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, Community work and a lot of uh, social work, yeah. uh, social yeah. causes. Now, uh, speaking of speaking of being broke, which uh, I clearly am, if you see my apartment. But um, I was reading, and I was very surprised at this, that when you guys did Up and Smoke, you basically uh, you had made some money with the records, a, a lot of money. I'm sure the record company made a lot more, and you basically pulled all of that, and were it was hard paying the rent until the movie came out. Is that true? Well, we had done that because we quit touring to do the movie, and that was where that was their big income. Those tours, you know, we were making big bucks just for one night, and and we had to stop that for the movie. And then, then when the movie came out, we we never we never really got paid, you know. And then I got sued. It was quite a quite a trip, but it all worked out well. Because uh, you know it, it, it always does. And, well, what did uh, you get sued for? Because I had a, a loan. I took out halfway. 
when we started the movie, I had started, I moved from Malibu to uh, Bel Air. And, and so my Bel Air house was under construction. Mm -hmm. and, and, but, but I, we stopped touring to do the movie. And so I, I stopped having income to, to pay for the construction. And so, so I went to Lou and I told Lou I needed, needed some bucks. And well, so Lou arranged, that. you know, arranged for, uh, for me to get a hundred grand. Well, the way he, got, it's a long story, but anyway, the way he got the hundred grand came up in court because it, it wasn't from Lou. It was from another account that mm. the accountant was in charge of. Uh. And, and so if that loan got defaulted, which was getting defaulted, then the accountant would be out the hundred G's. So the accountant sued me. Well, when the, when the accountant sued me, then that the, the thing called discovery, mm -hmm. then we found out where the money for making of at least the last part of up and smoke where right. it came from. And there was a lot of surprises, a lot of raised eyebrows, a lot of, uh, a little bit of discussion and then a, a nice settlement. And, uh, and and that was the end of the the Cheech and Chong and Lou Adler enterprise, right? And so and then we met Howard Brown, and uh, Howard got us you know, lawyers and got us uh, really on the right track. And then then everything after after that everything was fine. And after that, the movies were C and C Brown Productions. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I've, I've seen your movies once or twice. I see, I see that. But you uh, noticed Shelby's a producer on a few of them. Yes, you know? no, I, I did, and uh, uh, I. But uh, Up and Smoke then became like the biggest, one of the biggest hits of the year. It was the uh, it second was. highest grossing comedy besides Animal House, and made a hundred million yep. dollars, which yep. today would, would be what three hundred million dollars. The way gas prices are, more like six hundred million dollars. Sure, sure, and. Uh, so you're vindicated, but not, I mean, you were vindicated, you're out of debt, but not exactly rolling in dough. No, the thing is, uh, my whole thing, my whole life has never been about money. Uh, had it been, I wouldn't be where I am today because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a chance from right from the beginning, you know, to stay and become a mogul, you know, and uh, I, I went for the, for the excitement, you know, the gig. You know, the learning. I, I wanted to try this and try that. And, you know, it was great. You know, Like, I, everything I became, I became first, and then I realized who I was. And then I sort of dwelt on that, enjoyed it, then moved on. <laughs> because now you're going to be a mobile. I, when, <laughs> Cheech and I, when we broke, Cheech and I broke up, I kind of, it was kind of weird, you know, because what happened, he got a... a uh, offered a movie without me right. and the whole thing was that it's going to be a Cheech movie or a mm -hmm. Richard Marin movie and and then he come up and told me that he was doing a movie without me period and so I said well then basically fuck you see you later oh, wow. you know? and, and, <laughs> uh, Born in East LA? Yeah that was Born in East LA Well let me ask you a question I, I, I didn't ask you this last time um, was, uh Born in East LA, even though you had nothing to do with it, is still credited to Cheech and Chong because it's on the Cheech and Chong album "Get Out of My Room," which you you did you did things on on other songs, but not that one. It skits. Did you well, get any royalties from that? The thing is, like, like Up in Smoke, I wrote Up in Smoke, but then right. Cheech and I shared. You know, uh, I wrote the lyrics in, in the most of the Basketball Jones. You know? Right. Uh, Eric My Eye wrote most of the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Gator Lorem wrote the music. Right. Uh, Cheech got a half of everything. You see, it was always Cheech and Chong. And that was the deal. Well, but when it came to Born in East LA, it was a song from Bruce Springsteen. Right. And Cheech wrote the whole thing by himself. Only problem was, in, in, in a way, it was a problem. And then, in a way, it was the solution. He did not include me, period. Mm -hmm. on that song right but yet it was under the cheech and chong to sell it thing, right. you know like so he never way, said sorry about starting never, sedanko over there but uh go ahead so he said he said 
uh, like Cheech never, because it was a, a, a remake of a Bruce Springsteen song. Right. See, and so it was really Bruce's song and Cheech doing it solo. But when Cheech wrote it, he never wrote any parts in for me except the cop part. You see, I really took offense to it because everything we had done, Cheech was always the star, you know. And he was like the lead singer, the star, the lead guy. And so, but it was me that was the directing the whole, the, the everything. But when it became Cheech's turn, Cheech would never knew how to write me in, in anything. He, we did a, a, a video one time, Get Out of My Room. Mm -hmm. And there again, Get Out of My Room. I wrote the lyrics <laughs> and the song, you know, shared it with Cheech and Chong. Get know. out of my room and leave me alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't have to grow up. I'm already grown. Yeah. Uh, well, Cheech wanted to do a, a video. I wasn't into videos. I, I consider myself a movie maker. You know, mm -hmm. I did not. I wasn't ready to do a video. You know, especially with Cheech and Chong. You know, uh, in fact, I, I, I didn't even want to do a concert movie because once you do movies, you, you got to stay in that movie world. You know. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you you do, and we did, you know. But I I was still trying. I always wanted to stay, you know, with the with the A crowd, right? But, but it it never happened, and, and so Cheech uh, wrote the uh, the. Uh, I said, "You do the video." And he said, "I will." Uh, again, he never wrote any part for me. Everything was Cheech, right? You know? And uh, so, but but my so, question is, did you do you get royalties from that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But get out of my room. We just got a nice check. Yeah. We hadn't got a check for years. Yeah. But all of a sudden, we get a nice little chunk for get out of my room. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was nice surprise. Yeah. Gosh. I mean, we're getting checks, you know, we're still from up in smoke and still smoking all those. I mean, they're, I don't know how many years they've been out, but every year, you know, we get a nice little, little bundle. You know, well, people, yeah, people keep discovering them. I remember when I was a kid and my friend had the Get Out of My Room album, and we used to listen and laugh at that all the time. And my mom had Los Cochinos when I was a kid, and I love that. But uh, yeah. uh, speaking of Springsteen, Springsteen opened for you guys. His very first band. Uh, was, so this the was before the first first band? Day, well, you know, up until Springsteen, uh, I we used to tell promoters, you know, just get a folk singer to open for us. Because usually the Cheech and Chong crowd hated the folk singer so much. <laughs> Come on. It was like, oh, they were so glad to see us, you know. And, and it was tough on the folk singers, but they, a lot of them are immune to it, you know, because that's their, their want in life, you know, to be right. a folk singer. And, and so S S Springsteen was hired. He was going to be at the folk singer. But then he put the E Street Band together and... And he said, oh, opening for Cheech and Chong would be a per perfect spot to uh, debut the band. And so I remember them asking, do you mind if Bruce uses a, 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 a band? Uh, he's not a folk singer. We said, no, not at all. No, I didn't hear him. We came late or whatever, but the band had finished. But apparently it was the first time they ever played. And the right. sax player, the sax player told me that story. Yeah, it was I, we had no idea. Cheech and I, we had no idea. You know, we just come on door gate, go home. You know, we had no, yeah. no idea, no backstory. You so know, you backstory. guys never, you never, you never shared a ball or anything like that with Springsteen. No, I have. No. And the Cheech might have. Cheech chased him around to get the rights for Born in East LA, and finally nailed him, and he got it. You know, Cheech is a bulldog. He, he doesn't let go. You know, he he does it when he wants to get something. Yeah, like his new art gallery, man. It's going to be incredible. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah it's uh, good yeah. for him. And yeah. uh, 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 there's so 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 many questions I have. I have I have Cheech and Chong overload. But uh, um, I was gonna I was gonna say, speaking of uh, smoking bowls with celebrities, now who's I mean, you you smoke weed with almost everybody, right? No, uh, quite a few, quite a few. Uh, is there somebody that I would never suspect that you smoke weed with? Uh, you know, leave it to Beaver. Yeah, <laughs> the, the show Wally. Wally, you Big smoke. Brother. You smoke weed with Wally. Uh, Tony Dow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was George Harrison, Tony Dow, and myself. 
I, I remember <laughs> I, I took a, I lit the joint. I handed it to George Harrison. He took a hit. Then he handed it to Tony Dow. That's Wally. a party. You and, 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 and we, we were Wally outside at a, at a friend's house. And, and I looked up Wally. <laughs> Wally? <laughs> and he gave me that. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> 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 and he told, yeah, he's a sculptor, you know, he's an artist. Right. And, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he's a cool guy, very cool guy. Uh, uh, I have a follow up question to that Is there anyone you haven't smoked weed with that you'd really want to? I always tell on my bucket list is Paul McCartney because I've smoked either with or in front of or be around every Beatle except Paul. And Paul, Paul was the only pothead, really serious pothead in the group. And uh, and he's the only one that I haven't, you know, I was around John. I never spoke with him. I smoked with George, like I said. And and Ringo, you know, he's always hanging out somewhere, you know, drying Who up. Who hasn't smoked a bowl of Ringo? Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. But uh, uh, what's it? What? Uh, how is Willie Nelson's weed? How is it like to smoke weed with him? Willie, you know, we're, we're we're both up there. Willie's senior to me. You know? Oh yeah, no, he's well, he's still he's still going. I, uh, I apparently uh... no, he, he, no, he's a energizer bunny for sure. Uh, Willie, I respected Willie's acting in Barbarossa more. Really, I, you know, I'm into Willie. He's a, the greatest songwriter and uh, performer ever. You know, I mean, he's. And he's our national hero. Uh, but uh, his acting in Barbarossa just blew me away. Now, I was really stoned when I saw it. And, but I loved the story and I loved Willie's performance. It was just because he played a badass, you know. And I love, I love Willie as a badass, all those guys. Wow. Will and Jennings, too, you know. He, he'd be a good badass. Yeah. I've never seen Barbarossa. I gotta, I gotta check it out. Oh, see it! It's a beautiful uh, Gary Busey, uh, you know, uh, sort of younger. I, I would yeah. imagine you've uh, you've uh, talked with uh, Gary Busey once or twice. Not really, not talked. You know, but, uh, we we crossed paths a few times in a TV show and a movie. One time we sort of crossed paths, but uh, he he's <laughs> he's a little nervous, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> he needs to smoke more. I, <laughs> no, it's just his. It's just him. You know, yeah, it's just, he's, so, uh, he's he's such a such a artist. You know, well, the Buseys, you know, the whole gang. I mean, they're incredible. You know, yeah, you, he's you know a great actor, was, but he seems uh, a little off the wall. You know who I was with the other day, uh, James Keach. Okay, you know, Stacy Keach's Keech brother. And, yeah, James. James and I. He, he's a, a grower. He, he's into growing, and and we we're talking about. I got a Tommy Chong grow tent. And we we're talking about uh, growing uh, weed, and you know, and and so we're going to hook up and and do a thing. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I I've got a lot of those friends that we should put them in a movie somewhere. You know, they should they got to be in movies. You know, right? Now let me ask you about Stacy Keach because I got to be I, I I to me his performance in Up and Smoke and and in Nice Dreams is so great because he plays it perfectly straight. He's not going yeah. for the laugh. He's completely serious. He's giving a real performance, and it's great. It's hilarious. Fucking genius. Well, see, that was lacking in 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 my other movies. Is that that pro actor? The, the, what what they do? They have a, a grasp of the of the the genre it's so so tightly that that they they become a a movement within a, a movie. That's why you right. want them in there. You know that's why you hire the stars because they 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 bring this this ball of uh, of talent and it just floats through your movie and it's so magical and yeah I miss Stacy or Stacy those guys those kind of guys right. because mm -hmm. it's like making a, a a samurai sword you know. You have to melt the steel so many times and, and, and bend it and melt it to get that, that hard cutting edge. And that's the same as those actors. You know, they've done so many things and they've learned so much of the craft that you get them on, on camera and everything, that energy just explodes within that. And, and that's what you get out of it, you see. 
And, and I, I made the mistake. I, well, I lost interest. Uh, and, and there was a, there was some weird shit going on between Cheech and I, you know, because he was pissed off that I was that all the movies were like from me. And then and so then I tried to make some concessions, you know, and then when you do that, you know, everybody loses, you know, and, and, and that shit didn't work. Uh, there were mo moments, you know, and I'm talking about the other projects. There were good moments, you know, like still smoking to me is, is one of my best, you know, I, I just, Great. yeah. But the, yeah. that, that lard ass yeah. scene, <laughs> <laughs> it me up every time because I mean, you guys are funny, but just to see him just, just lose his mind is hilarious. <laughs> you get the two together. It's great. I'm telling you. You know, every success, you need a failure. Every, you know, political fight, you need an enemy. Right. You know? That's the way. That's the way of the world. That's the way of the physical world. You need the right. opposite, and the more opposite you get, the more enjoyable it is. Now you've got a real tennis match. You know, right. you don't just have one pro just whacking the serves past somebody else. you got a, someone that's knocking the serve back. And now right. you got a game, you know? And that's the way it is with acting. You know, but, you want to get that. And then you want to get it all. You want to get the writer. You want to get the director. You want to get the producer, you know, and the actors and the story. And then you create, you create life. And it's to me, if, if, you got a, if you got a comedian, even a great one like Robin Williams or Bill Murray, it wouldn't be as funny as it is just seeing this guy legitimately just lose his shit. Because yeah. you guys are lard ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So great. Yeah. I mean, uh, Stacy being straight was such a genius. And how about Strether Martin, my dad? Oh, you know, that scene is, oh, we quote that scene all the time. The Finkelstein chicken. I love it. <laughs> and listen, think about it. This was all before credits. Oh no! It, that, that's what's great about up, up in smoke. It was crazy. It now, was did, like a movie and then credits. Wow! And did then, he did he improvise the Finkelstein shit kid? Is that like a, a bad take? He that you left improvised in? every word. Really, every word. He, he, in fact, we never really had a rehearsal. We <laughs> we just he he looked at the script. Yeah, he figured it out. And me, I had no lines. You know, I, I just burped in his face, and that's yeah, what it. Off. And he just did it, sing, man. But there you go. There again, that's a that's the explosion I'm talking about. You give these guys a stage, man, and they'll light it up like, like, like they did, like they did. But it's you not see? only veteran actors, though. You discovered a lot of people. I remember yeah. when I was a kid, I would watch these movies like Pee Wee Herman was in a Cheech and Chong movie, but that's that's where he got started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you yeah, find him? We, well, uh, I came out of the improvisational acting uh, genre, you know, and uh, and so when I started, uh, you know, uh, casting my movie, I wanted to work with uh, improv actors, and and that's why up in smoke we had uh, uh, Robert Altman, all of his crew, his people, because Robert Altman was the improv uh, filmmaker. And so the crew and everybody understood improv acting. You know, you shoot the rehearsal, that kind of thing. And 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 uh, we, you know, that's that that was our that that was. I looked at the whole movie industry the way I looked at our act. You know, and 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 I, and 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 I just realized using the best people, they're they're craftsmen. And, and I'm talking about the uh, Robert Altman, you know. Mm -hmm. Lou Lombardo was was really, and, and now Lou Ather was the director, and he was a good director because he listened to everything I told him to say and to do. He he did it perfectly. <laughs> he did it perfectly. So that's the way we directed because I I, I couldn't I did after a while, but it, you know, but being doing that broke Cheech and I up. Had we kept Lou or or a guy like Lou. Uh, you know, we we would have uh, still broken up <laughs> because we could never sign it. <laughs> well, it's funny to say Altman because I was going to ask if he was an influence because maybe my favorite scene in any of your movies is the next movie, the welfare office scene. 
because yeah. there's like 10 things going on at once. Yeah. Yeah. I saw somebody do a reaction video. He couldn't follow it. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like, there's some going on in the foreground, some going on in the background. You got, yeah. Teachers trying that to was, get with Donna. That was my, that was mine. That came all out of me. That was, I, I will take credit for that whole scene. It's you it's know, a whole, it's a whole brilliant thing. scene and yeah well they're my, friends the guy the junkie with the cigarette was really he was a junkie he was Lenny Bruce's brother uh, father in law he had married Sally Marr Lenny's mother really and Tony Vascara he's a junkie he's nodding off. oh he's great and and the old guy he's an old cowboy actor you know with the no teeth he, he yeah. that was his thing uh, Michael Winslow. Was a comedian from uh, uh, San Francisco that right. uh, the casting office they found him. They said you could check out this guy; he's crazy. And so then I saw a little bit of his act. So he he be he, he's in the scene, and then Cheech and Evelyn making out, and then me. And all see all I had to do is just watch him, just watch him, just look around. It was an incredible. Yeah, that scene is being taught in 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 uh, film school. It, it goes it's really? 11. I think it's an 11 minute scene without a cut. Oh, so, really? So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it, it was uh, incredible. Yeah, because I had it all going. But see, that's my improv training. You see? Right. Because you get you have a stage. And so you get all these different things going at the same time. You see. And, and, yeah. and so the eye gets to just wander back and forth. And, and because we are men, like you see the kids with their. Uh, with their phones and that now, you know, they can multitask like they have to. I mm -hmm. mean, th their brains are developed that way. And so it, when I did that scene, I mean, that's what that blew so many minds in the movie people. You know? Right. And, and very, and, very Altman-esque because he yes. did stuff like that, too. Yeah. Not oh, yeah. quite like yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that's, that was my inspiration. Robert Altman and that, that whole genre. The the movie actor, the movie director that I was, uh, um, uh, Terry Malick. Terry Malick. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, that's my all time. Uh, he's my he's my the guy I I really look. At. I called him, you know, for Up and Smoke. Oh really? And, and I wanted because we're looking for a director, and so I I give uh, uh, Terry Malick a call, and, and he says direct it yourself. And then I didn't take his advice until I started directing movies myself because, you know, like Up in Smoke, I had Lou Adler. And then after that, it was all me, you know. Uh, wow. and so I, I, I listened to Terry Malick. You know? I'm trying to picture a Terrence Malick version of Up in Smoke. It's all <laughs> my mind. <laughs> no, you, you could, that would, could only be a Tommy John version. I was going to say. You know, there's no, uh, that, that's what made it so special. You know, because I really was embedded with the troops. I was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with the black culture with Motown, and then I was with uh, with, with Cheech. I got into the Chicano culture, mm -hmm. uh, and and that was the culture that I wanted to highlight. You know, right. uh, because up to then it was always uh, white guys or New York Jewish guys uh, uh, doing their version of of the ghetto, their version right. of the Chicanos, and they're always you know cartel guys or gang members, you know, hard ass. But I I wanted to show that 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 lowrider, the guy that was only interested in his car, uh, you know, that he didn't even park on his property. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. That that the opening before the credits with Cheech and I, it was so classic because uh, Cheech's cousin Louie uh, helped write the my scene, you know, with the uh, with the dad, you know, mm -hmm. Anthony Stoner. Uh, that that was Cheech's that was your name. Cousin. Yeah, Anthony Stoner, and and Cheech's cousin Louie wrote that, and that was one of the, we, we did a, a, a we did some writing, you know, in the beginning, and then once we got the the thing got go, go, and then we just wrote as we went, you know, including the ending. Right. And, uh, which is great, but, um, you guys broke a lot of racial, uh, taboos for the better. Like yeah, you say, uh, you guys on purpose. Were the first ones. On purpose. It was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I visually see when I was a kid, like I, I, I got, I got a Nazi tattoo on my, on my arm. Because when I was a kid, our house was kind of used. We we took in boarders, and 
when I was about 15, I, I come across this guy just got out of jail, needed a place to stay. And so he came and stayed with us and uh, turned out that he was like a white nationalist uh, skinhead type, you know, with tattoos on, on all his hands, fingers, mm. chest, everything. And uh, and he gave me a, a, a white supremacy tattoo on my arm, which I didn't know it was a white supremacy tattoo. Even, until, even though uh, you're, you're not you're not uh, you're not completely white, you're uh, half Chinese. I know. I know. It was a, it was like a joke. You know, and that's why no one suspected anything. It wasn't until I, I was on uh, on a, a talk show with some uh, bikers, and the guy goes, "Hey, that's a white supremacy tattoo you got." I said, "Really? <laughs> oh shit!" That but, would be such a shock. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, but but I got to be honest. When I was a kid, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that uh, said this to you, I thought you both were Mexican. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got I get that all the time. Yeah, I was all doing, but... the time. But and you know the weird thing is, I, I was in Tijuana or Matzalan near Tijuana, mm -hmm. and and I was trying to rent a car, and, and and when the guy, the car guy goes, "Your name is Chong." Hey, just a minute, come here. I, I want you to meet someone. And he calls a Chinese guy in. And he's Chinese, and his name is Chong. And he's got dark <laughs> glasses on, but he sounds like Cheech. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, hey it's Chong. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, man, my name is Chong, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're Chong. Yeah, yeah, I'm Chong, man. Yeah. That's so great. He, he says, excuse the dark glasses, but I got in a fight last night. And he takes his glasses off. He's got two black eyes. Yeah. So it was weird, you know, because the culture has intermingled, you know. And well, and I'm, that's yeah. really what that's really what Cheech and I brought out in Up and Smoke. You see, because we we introduced all these different ghetto uh, trips, but it was all we're all joined together with music right. and weed and weed in order to the have universal music. language. Well, in order to have music, you need weed, and so we found the weed. Then we got our music. You see, and that's what united unites the world, and that's what we uh, we have to shoot for uh, now. You know, and and find a way, and we have. We we've got our, our, our uh, Zoom calls and everything, and uh, yeah. yeah, we can it's, do this. It's amazing that uh, you know I I don't even know because I was uh, you know I it's before my time, but I can't I can only imagine how revolutionary it was in 1978 to have a movie starring a Mexican and a half Chinese guy, and yeah, no big deal. Breaking box office records, breaking and, box and, office and, records, and, and it was no big and, deal. And, and saving industries like the drive-in movie theater. We we met their association and, and they all came up and thanked us and gave us a plaque actually b because we saved that industry because they right. had Cheech and Chong uh, weekends <laughs> and and they would be packed it was and they're seeing the same movie over and over again <laughs> and there's a big <laughs> cloud and, over the and up and drive smoke in. festival <laughs> yeah and and it's at a drive-in and so everybody's smoking and everything and so we saved the industry we saved the drive-in movie industry. I well, love drive-in movies. Speaking of drive-ins, how did you do the uh, in Los Cochinos? You have that bit where you get, where you sneak a bunch of people in the truck and they're driving. <laughs> how did you how did you make those sounds with the? Uh, oh yeah, we, he's we, peeing we, on we, the we, on the trunk and they're banging on the trunk. How did you do that? Uh, we we got our ways, you know. We uh, we did you pee we, on a trunk or uh, there, there's secrets. There, there, they're oh. actually. They're actually uh, trade secrets. We can't we can't okay. divulge them yet because uh, Cheech and I we we did all the sound effects in a little mix down room, and mm -hmm. and we had an engineer. That's all we needed. An engineer and Cheech and Charlie in a mix down room, and then we just we just partied the whole time, you know. And then what happened? You know, usually you do a project, and you're done. You know, relax. You know, and think about another. But no, when you do a hit record next thing you know the record company said what else you got you know right. when can we have the next one and then the next one and the next one next thing we did what eight nine albums man and they were chasing right. us around the country you know lewis and crews out to chicago or to montreal you know we're working a club and we go oh we have to record an album while we're doing the club wow. and we did them we we did it we did we had so much fun man well, I'm sure. yeah it was, there was no labor involved it was all about getting high and meeting great people and just laughing and having a great time, you know.
And I listen to them on vinyl now. You put on the headphones. When you put on the headphones on a Cheech and Chong record, it's like a Pink Floyd record. Like things are just going all over the place. Oh yeah. And oh headphones. yeah. Well, we did it purposely, you know. And, and I think we we inspired a lot of people, you know, a lot of the recording artists because we were first. You know, we were right. out there a long time, and so I can see a lot of artists. Well, that's why I was on uh, a couple of Dr. Dre albums, you know, and mm -hmm. he uh, he. Uh, he he didn't really agree with my politics, but he sure liked my popularity, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, uh, you like your weed too, a, I'm sure. We never really got high, I, you know. Our Dr. Dre and I were, I were very businesslike, you know. I'd come into the studio, he'd tell me what he wanted, you know, and I would do it, and that was it, you know. I, I never really got to meet him one time. Oh, really? Oh, wow. That's no, he was no. very businesslike. And I was in a movie. I was in a movie with him too. Him and Stoop. I was in the wash. The wash. Yeah. And and uh, again, you know, I, I did the scene with him and uh, see you later. You know, it wasn't even a see you later. It was it was kind of a, I guess, a, you know, a cultural thing. I guess you know. I don't, too, I don't I don't know how to. You know, he's too big, I, big for Tommy Chong. What's the matter with him? No, Dr. It, J was here right now. I would straighten him out for you. No, no reason to. No, okay. no, because because they're already straight. You know. Okay. He, what well, is he that got, what it is? He got fifty million. But how much did he get for his uh, headphones? Oh, uh, there's his, more than fifty million. He's yeah, he's yeah, I think, yeah. I think he's a billionaire now. Beyond, beyond that. Yeah, yeah. And, and he just donated ten million to the Compton High School. So, yeah. so he, so, so he's a, he's. He's very cool on that side. No, I'm talking about you know personal. You know we right. we, we never cooked it up. Snoop and I are a little tighter, you know. Right. But but I understand those guys because I really represent uh, like my tat my tad, you know. Right. Uh, I I'm not I'm not black, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 I represent a lot of people that that have, uh, you know that that southern white. Uh, supremacy tattoo that attitude you know there's a lot of a lot of people i grew up in that neighborhood you know right and, and in fact we were because i was mixed we were the ones that were considered the n-word you know sure of the neighborhood sure. yeah it was us and and so i understood that whole dynamic that that headspace you know well, well you're racially <laughs> you're racially ambiguous too so i'm sure you got called all sorts of things well not really because my brother was a hockey player very tough he was mm -hmm. older. He's three okay. years older. So anybody said anything to me, or even look look cross that at me, they they got hurt, you know, immediately. And my brother would, had respect of all the tough guys. He was a tough guy. Uh, yeah. No, no, we, we had no problem as, on the physical side of it. It, it was more uh, strain, strain, like it is today. The weakling, you know, the meek and the mm -hmm. strong, you sure. know. The intellects, the, you know, the nerds, you know, they're yeah. cowering, and then you got the, the the jocks. They're looking for things to hurt themselves with. Right. You know. Well, it, things are kind it, of flipped. So the nerds are like the uh, the bullies now, and the jocks are kind of <laughs> cowering. But Dr. Dre, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you off with a warning because you've been so charitable. But um, but, but let me let me um, let me ask you this. I've got a weird question about my favorite movie of yours, which is Nice Dreams. I for some reason, that movie really clicked with me. I think it might have been the first one I saw, but uh, it's from uh, Jason McNeil. And uh, he said the first time he saw martial arts legend Jeff Amata was in Chicha Chong's Nice Dream. He had the role as the waiter, and he pulls out a, a butterfly knife and opens yeah. the wine at the table. So, yeah. and then you went, Whoa, and how did that come about? How did you make him? He wanted a role in the movie. And, uh, and he showed me the trick with the knife. And so I wrote him in. I said, okay, you'll be the waiter. How'd you meet him? I, uh, casting. You know, he was trying to get in the movies. You okay. know, and, and they would come up. I, I love, that's why I love the movie industry. You, you meet all these people. They want to work, you know. And and he, he came up through casting. Apparently the butterfly knife was new to the West. Yeah, it was brand new. Brand new. And we should, it was, yeah, there was like, I, I, I had trippy things in the movies all throughout. Uh, right. You know, well, that, that, that was, that was, uh, that was my, my, my way of, uh, you know, improv movies. You know? 
But Nice Dreams is probably the trippiest movie that you've done. It's got that ending with uh, Michael Winslow doing uh, Jimi Hendrix, and it just it, it trips you out every time. And uh, we know which one. Nice, nice dreams. dreams. Yeah. Nice dreams. Is that the list? You guys are in a psych ward, and Sandra Bernhard is one of the patients, and they got a guy barking like a chicken, and uh, <laughs> it's another one. There's like ten things happening at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And Pee Wee Herman's in there. And... <laughs> hamburger man, hamburger. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Stacy Keats turns into a lizard, and it's yeah, all yeah, that was a trip. That was a trip. Well, you know what happened? We come down, uh, and uh, and uh, the props department had a iguana with a joint yeah. smoking. Remember? And yeah. So I said, so I had to pay that off somehow, you know, because that's what you want to do with a movie. You get something going, but you got to pay it off, you know, and, and so. I, I never really had an ending for 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 Stacy being a stoner the way he was an upper you know or 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 a, a mind blower. I wanted a mind blowing uh, ending, and so I turned him into a lizard. That was great, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Tongue reaching out. <laughs> He's got the tail in the back seat, and uh, <laughs> it's a scene with you two. Uh, it is Paul Pee Wee Herman and Stacy Keats in the car as a yeah. lizard. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, and, and Nicole, I don't know if you know this. Go ahead, if you have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to ask a question, but go ahead. Uh, uh, I was I was gonna... Gonna... Your question first, and now I've got a question. Well, I was inspired by the uh, your question. Uh, so if the, is there one of your projects that you're the most proud of? Like, you probably get asked that a lot, but I'm just curious what you feel is your best work that you... Well, I, 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 there's a little bit in everything I love the most. They're like, they're like my kids, they're all separate. You know, I love them each for the what they are. You know, everyone, everyone. I I, I don't have a, a bad feeling for for any of them. Uh, I had all good feelings. You know, something good came out of every one of them. You know, and uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I I, I was kind of disappointed with Cheech in, in in a way. You know. But after giving it a lot of thought, I realized that it was inevitable. You know, it was time. It was time to move on. I had said everything with Cheech and Chong that you could say, you know, without all of a sudden repeating yourself. And you know, that's kind of like, eh, you know, uh, we could do something now, and I intend to. You know, we got a documentary coming out of us, and, and I intend it. But uh, no, you know, things happen the way they happen. You know. That's why they're so good. You, you you film them, and then you got them. You got them forever, you know. Nice. And what was what was it like uh, performing with Cheech for the first time in twenty plus years, in front of a oh. huge crowd that a huge adoring crowd? It's like learning how to eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's all instinct. <laughs> it's so natural. It's so natural. It's like it was yesterday. You know, there was no time. Because my life never changed. It was just that I was on stage by myself for about 20 years. Right. And, no, with my wife, with yeah. Shelby. Shelby and I started. And and then when Cheech joined, you know, one of the stipulations that I had with my wife is that she's part of the act or, you know, and that's it. And right. she became a big part of the act and she still is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, she, she, Apparently doesn't age. She looks fantastic, and oh, uh, and she's, she's very incredible. funny. She's incredible. She's funny. She's charming. She's uh, ditzy. She's <laughs> she's got a natural nuttiness about her that it's like, wow! I wish I had filmed that. You know, <laughs> she's and, uh, uh, amazing. How, how'd you meet her? She was my neighbor, which I didn't know. I was married uh, to Maxine. Happily married, pretty recently married. Uh, then we were given a nightclub, and it was a steakhouse, and I turned it into an after-hours club. And we had it for like five, seven years. It was in great, but in the beginning, we were losing money. In fact, we were getting no buddy came in. It was just, it was hopeless. It looked pretty bad. <clears throat> and then, so we had an outside gig. We played a place called the uh, Teen Fair, 
Uh, well, first of all, we played a, a place on the, on the beach, and that's when I first saw her. She she came off the beach. I was outside, and I saw her come off the beach with a with her little uh, uh, brother holding his hand, and he walked up toward me and passed me. And uh, that's when I first saw her. And I I swear to God, I've never seen anything more beautiful in my life. <laughs> she was so gorgeous and because she had sort of like a sneer you know, on her face like but it was natural it was just the way her mouth went but i love that that oh who are you that look and so then that night we we were on stage playing and again she's with her, her sister now and her brother and she comes up to the stage and she wanted to talk to the singer because her and her sister were into black guys at the moment. And I, I jumped right in front of the singer and said, hi. <laughs> and, she, and she said, do you know Walking the Dog? And I said, yeah. She said, well, play it. <laughs> and when she said it, I just, oh, my God. I, I fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. And so I turned turned to the band and I said, they said, what what does she want? I said, they want to, she wants walking the dog. And we knew it. So we played the hell out of it. I turned around and she was gone. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and she had to walk a dog. It. At the end of the song, I look up, she's gone. No, no insight. And so then now, a week or so later, we're playing at a teen fair. Well, her and her sister, no kid this time, they come up after the, the gig and they start making the conversation. Now, now this time she's talking to me, at least she's not talking, but she's kind of, I'm the guy that, that was walking the dog. She, she saw the interest, you know, she's like a fisherman. She saw, I took the bait. So she's going to reel me in. <laughs> so, so next thing I know, we're going to give them a ride to another nightclub, not our nightclub, but another nightclub where everybody, all the hip people go. And and so she gets in the back seat. I'm in the back seat. <laughs> and uh, our band uniform at the time, we were sort of like running out of ideas and money. And so we had dickies underneath uh, shirts. You know what a dickie is? The, right. The turtleneck. Right. <laughs> and so we get, we get in the car together. I'm in the back seat. She's in the back seat. And she's looking out the window. And she says, take off that dickie. And I, I looked at her. I said, excuse me? And she goes, take off that dickie. <laughs> oh, I said, oh, okay. So I, I took it off. And she said, now get me some popcorn. <laughs> I fell so in love with her. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I ran. And you've been giving her popcorn. her popcorn ever since. I ran and got her popcorn and brought it back. And then she's okay. Now take it, drop us up to Harlem Nocturne, the other club. <laughs> and, and Floyd, the drummer, was in the car, and uh, and uh, Tommy, and uh, yeah, and we drive, and Wes, so we drive uh, down to the Harlem Nocturne, drop off the girls, go to our club, and about an hour later, I hear a big commotion at the door. We got no one in the club, and I look, and and, and it's Shelby. And her sister and a shitload of guys, the whole other club. <laughs> what happened was Ah, uh, she pulled that move. No, they wouldn't let her in the other club. I think she was too young or something. And so she said, Oh, well, I know a club we can get into. And so she literally pied pipered the whole crowd down to our club. And our club stayed full every night from that moment on. It was packed to the rafters and it was all because of Shelby and so we became friends and and then after a while we became more than friends and then after a while we became parents and uh and then after another while we became lovers and uh and then well you were lovers before parents right obviously okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was getting confused for a second there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been together ever since. You know. Well, tell Shelby, I know, Nicole, after we interviewed you last time, 
she went on her Instagram page is like, Tommy's wife is awesome. And I, mm-hmm. I, I've seen Far Out Man and things are tough all over and other things she's been in. And I've seen her do stand up and uh, we're big fans. Oh, yeah. She, she is amazing. And her painting. Oh, my God. Her painting is through the roof. Seriously. Yeah. She's uh, gifted. She's very gifted. And we went on a painting expedition in uh, last week uh, to uh, Umbria, Italy, and uh, where we took lessons with her teacher. And I, I took photographs, and uh, I had a lesson. But she, she really, she's really good, good, very talented, very beautiful. She's all that. And I'm very jealous, and that makes it all work. Uh, it, it's so, it's so nice to see your eyes twinkle when you talk about her. Oh yeah, yeah. She's yeah. my love. She's my love. Oh. I can't wait. I I I I did something that I'm not supposed to do today. I had the oh. dog trimmed. I had the poodle trimmed, and uh, yeah, under explicit uh, warning, don't get him trimmed. And I did. So I'm waiting for her to come home to hear uh, the reaction. <laughs> Should be interesting. Well, I. <laughs> I'll hold you up too long. If I, I do have a couple more questions, if it's okay. Sure. We appreciate your time, and uh, you've always been generous. And everybody's like, what's, this, what's it like to talk to Tommy Chong? And I'm like, he's the coolest. He's so nice. And, uh, you know, it, obviously because you're medicated, but that you, you are very nice. But, uh, yeah. yeah but I, job, I, I uh, uh, half-baked. Nicole will kill yeah. me, but I, I just saw it for the first time the other night. Oh, I've never yeah. seen it. Kill you, yeah. but I hope it was a good experience. <laughs> it was, but I was surprised that uh, you're in a movie about weed and you didn't smoke weed in the movie. You play, you play a guy in prison. I yeah, I played, uh, played Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate. The squirrel yeah. guy. Yeah, squirrel master. And squirrel the weird master. thing is, right after that movie, I went to jail and I used to feed uh, squirrels. If anything, <laughs> I, I, I could have had a squirrel pet if I wanted because we used to go feed the the ground squirrels because the food was so bad in prison that the squirrels they're, they're the ones that got fat you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we'd feed them but yeah yeah uh have been the squirrel master in real life yeah I, I ended up being i'm telling you everything's ordained you know there were so many signs of me going to jail i had a guy write a script he was a script writer my daughter found. And then I said, well, write a, you know, script, a Cheech and Chong script. And he wrote about bongs being busted and doing time in prison. And that was the last thing. I mean, it was so ordained that I was going to go down. That, you put uh, it out in the universe. and uh, Yeah, yeah. It was out there. But I, 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 I've said, I said this last time, but I really want to reiterate. I think, and I, I really, it's just so awful, uh, you know, that you had to go to jail. And I recommend everybody watch the documentary, a.k.a. Tommy Chong, which apparently the government confiscated a bunch of DVDs of, but, uh, and also read your book, I Chong, the I Chong. But uh, you going to jail, I think, has led to the widespread legalization of marijuana because it was so ridiculous. Absolutely. It was the final straw, <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> because there's no explanation for it, especially when they found out that there were no mass weapons of mass destruction. And yet Tommy John went to jail for bombs, you see, because that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to create a false narrative, you know, that the hippie dope movement was funding uh, terrorism. Right. <clears throat> that's what they were trying to, to push at the time. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, because Bush was very Putin-like. You know, at the time, and, and, uh, and as as it turned out, he went to war, you know, just like Putin did. You know, people forget people forget how bad Bush was, but um, but uh, you know, so yeah, I think you got. I mean, you got thrown in jail for somebody selling bongs with your name, and not even you. Well, they wanted a name, uh, you know. To be honest with you, they wanted a, a celebrity. You know, they didn't want some pot, you know, some glass blower, you know, like Jason Harris. They didn't want him. You know, they wanted Tommy Chong because Tommy Chong has a name. And and like in the indictment, they even said that I made fun of law enforcement agencies in my movie. That was that was in the indictment. 
Well, that's technically true, but still. <laughs> <laughs> but since that's not a crime. Against, that's true. But since, you, when it, since when is it, is it against the Constitution to, that you can't make fun of law enforcement? You know, uh, it's, it's so ridiculous that you no, know. No, it, it was. It was uh, everything was wrong about it, but the reason was that it it martyred brought the tension to me. It's much like this leaked document from the from the uh, 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 Supreme Court, you know, that that they're going to overturn Roe. It's almost like they're going to ruin the GOP, you know, uh, because right. that's what's going to happen, you know. Uh, you know, when you when you put the entire woman, except for the nutcases, against you, you know, you're going to lose, dude. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, it, and and now, you know, I, I think you deserve a lot of credit, you know, and, and for your sacrifice. But because of you, there's dispensaries on every corner. Absolutely. Absolutely. As there should and, be. And, Why and, not? And, and you can grow in your privacy of your own home. You can, uh, you know, you can do it. The only thing we can't do yet. And, and you know what? This is even going to make cryptocurrency even bigger uh, because it looks like the cryptocurrency is the only way we're going to be able to deal with our, our cash from uh, from the, the marijuana stores, you know. And so uh, if we work it right, righteously, which it will be worked, then uh, uh, the currency, you know, marijuana is going to be able to generate its own uh, currency. Uh, in 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 effect, uh, you know, like like everything else does, you know, corn, wheat, barley, you know, right. the yeah, all commodities have, market, yeah, 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 and that that's what is going to happen, and uh, and Cheech and Chong are going public, and, and we have a delivery service, and we have a oh, great, you know, uh, all sorts of our own brands, you know, Cheech has his brand, I got my brand, and then we have brands together, and then we got. CBD and we got it all, you know, gummies, we got everything. And so, so, uh, it's just a matter of time, uh, before, uh, you know, we, we get it all done and we're going to get it all done. It's happening. That's great. That's great. Uh, the, another, the other question I had, uh, a lot of people don't even know you're from Chichi Chan. They know you're from that 70s show. And I know they're doing a reboot of that 70s show called that 90s show. Are you involved in that? Yes, I am. Actually, they give me a call and I did my part. It's uh, the kids, uh, the grandkids. It's Red and, uh, and Kitty and the grandkids. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't know what the grandkids did, but I got a good idea. And right. uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be great. It's That's great. I'm glad, great. They, 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 I'm glad they put you in there. They should. Yeah. I mean, they, they never give me any instructions, so I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about it or not i really don't give a <laughs> shit <laughs> tell you the truth you know? <laughs> i've got a big mouth that's what i'm known for that's why people <laughs> want me on their podcast because they exactly do talk, you know well that's a dark mark show exclusive tommy tom will be in that 90s show yeah, but, uh, yeah. leo leo i'm back as leo leo's back leo's back yeah. on that 90s show and yeah. my uh, unless unless nicole has another question i have just one last question What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen uh, or you've ever smoked that's been turned into a bomb? Weirdest thing that ever smoked has been turned into a bomb. Because I've seen bombs out of apples, bombs out of beer cans. I was going to say a dildo, but uh, I, I don't want to admit to having a penis anywhere near me. <laughs> uh, God, I don't know. I well, don't we'll know. go with dildo. I think that's a good because <laughs> i saw the uh, well i didn't realize until after <laughs> <laughs> no i i uh one i was just watching and i had this v vhs when i was a kid the tommy chong roast and you pulled out a dildo on the tommy chong roast playboy in the 80s was trying to get into the roast thing like 20 years before right time. right now what did i do oh was that uh teach night doing queer wars or something no no no, no. Uh, it was just you it was uh -huh. a roast of you. Chief yeah. wasn't involved. Marsha Warfield, Dick Sean, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. It was like Playboy tried and, to do uh, like... And a, and a dildo came out? 
So I can, you know what they got to You know they're inventing things now. So I think the perfect invention's got to be a spare dick. <laughs> so when you go on the road, you just, you know, unscrew it. You know, with it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on the road, dear. So just to make sure, you know, I'm not fooling around. I'm going to leave my dick here with you. <laughs> Take care of it. You know, have fun, and when you get, you know, a little horny, you can take my spare dick. I went to a sex shop to buy this thing, man. No, <laughs> this is weird. Those guys are weird in there. You know, you know what I mean, David. David goes on there. <laughs> David used to work in a... Would you like the little or a medium or the king size? You know? But, you know, trying to buy a dick, you know, they say, well, you want to try it out? Oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> So I wrap it. <laughs> but I thought, you know, that's great. It's gonna look good on television, you know. <laughs> this will make a nice shot too. There. <laughs> Some guy just turned on his TV channel and said, "What the hell is that show?" Dick Sean vomited on stage, so you put the dildo next to the vomit. It was a whole. Oh. It's on YouTube. You got to check that out again. It's it's hilarious. You know, I I I, I have a big memory of that bit. What I do remember is that Seinfeld. I never met Seinfeld. He never came back. Never said hello. Never mentioned my name on the show even. He, yeah, he's he's, he's an awful roaster. I got to be honest. He's not a he's not a like he did a couple like Cheech and Chong. Their movies have such great plots. And then he's like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you ever lose a sock in the laundry? And you're like, oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, a guy in Hartford, a uh, gangster. He had a nightclub. He opened. He, he, he had me booked there and so he opened it up and there's mail all over the floor obviously the feds had closed him down and he's opening it up to, to have the Tommy Chong night right <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and he said he didn't like Seinfeld either he said he, he did it but he said ever get something in your tooth and you can't get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was it was pretty funny yeah, yeah this was a, this this roast was like 20 years before it's time like I guess Playboy TV was trying to do roasts. And well, David Steinberg was the uh, he was the direct he directed it or produced it. Right. David Steinberg, right? Yeah. That he got me. Well, well, what happened? I did a Milton Berle roast for him, and and okay. my bit with Milton was that uh, you know he was so well hung that when a fire broke out, uh, someone came up and broke. Milton's glasses and unzipped his penis and pulled it down, ran down two flights of stairs and put out the fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Seinberg loved that. And so next thing I know, they're roasting Tommy Chong. But I don't remember the dildo. I don't remember that. Yeah, it's it's on YouTube, but you busted out a dildo and I, I can't remember what the whole bit was, but uh, you're like, I went to a sex shop to get this. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure. God, what... I got to check it out. Yeah, it's... I what what I used there was a video store at my uh, out by my house and they were getting rid of VHSs for DVDs and that's one of the, v, the VHSs I had and I I used to laugh at that when I was like I love that it was the fire sale huh yeah it was yeah I, I think the, I got nice dreams the, and a couple others the, too the, the throwaway bin <clears throat> yeah I remember those yeah. yes <laughs> the the Tommy Chong roast was like a big Playboy Tommy Chong roast and then. And then uh, you were also roasted by Greg Giraldo, probably one of the last roasts he did. Was yeah, with uh, Cheech and I were roasted. Yeah, by. that was on TNT, and that was a, yeah. a real roast. What did he die of? Uh, it was um, it, it, there's different accounts. Apparently, it was uh, uh, he died of he was uh, overdosed on some some prescription drugs. I think fentanyl or something. I'm not sure. I but I think he had a medical condition, and he and he just missed this this. Uh, they say he just uh, he didn't do the right dosage, which I don't know because he was in recovery, so I'm not sure. But he was he was great. What a yeah. great great comedian. Yeah, well, all I, those guys. Man, I hate uh, I know. hasten to say, uh, in my opinion, Greg Giraldo is funnier than Jerry Seinfeld. But uh, you know what am I going to say? That's that's my personal, <laughs> especially yeah. as a roaster. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know the guy that really uh, <laughs> cracked me up is Bobcat Goldsway. Oh, he's great. <laughs> How do you like Bobcat? I love Bobcat, and it's funny you should mention that because Jerry Seinfeld, Bobcat Goldthwait, uh, Jerry Seinfeld can't stand Bobcat Goldthwait. He did the the comedians in cars uh, drinking coffee and talk shit about Bobcat Goldthwait, and they bleep, bleep Bobcat Goldthwait's name out of it. And Bobcat's oh, like, the, I, 
Yeah, yeah, he's like, I don't, I, I, I didn't like him then, but I haven't seen him in a hundred years. I could care less about Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know why he keeps bringing it up. So Jerry Seinfeld like, said that. Yeah, and Jerry Seinfeld on the show is like, he always thought he was cool, he, but his act was terrible. He, mm. Who cares if you're cool if you got the jokes? And it's like, and the woman that he's got on the show is friends with Bobcat. She's like, uh, I like him, and so he's like, he sucks. Yeah, he oh. actually said he actually said he sucks on the show, which is weird. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bobcat got really mad at me one time. What happened? Well, uh, Shelby and I were working the East Coast, and uh, we just got out of uh, New Jersey, where um, uh, Dice Clay's crowd, you know, and mm -hmm. they really give Shelby a bad time. You know, she went out. And they purposely wouldn't laugh at any of your jokes. See, they were just really mean. And mm -hmm. uh, and so when she walked off stage, I said, I thought, you know, that she'd be devastated, but she wasn't at all. And she said, uh, she said, uh, uh, I said, so how was it? You know, I knew how it was. And she said, fuck them. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right. She's a comedian. She's real. And then. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, we're we're in in uh, Vegas, I guess, at uh, some comedy club there, and Bobcat's on the bill. Well, mm -hmm. Bobcat had just broken up with his wife, was in it, and he had a girlfriend on the road with him or something. Mm -hmm. anyway. And so Shelby, because she's opened the show, she mentioned something about it, you know, about oh yeah, dump the wife, you know that thing, and Bobcat. <laughs> Fucking died, man. He can run into the dressing room. He's your wife's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh and I said, but you know, Bobcat, I don't know, this is a news flash, but you're a comedian. She's a comedian. That's what we do. We uh, talk about each other, you know. Uh, and uh, he 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 cried like a baby. It, it was oh. funny. He kept crying after she was was finished. Uh, she had no idea. She was just glad the bit went over, you know, where right. it was. Well, he was going through a divorce, and uh, unlike you, uh, he didn't have Selby Chong waiting for him after the divorce. So I gave him a little slack on that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, one more question, and, and I, I really appreciate you sticking with us, and we've always done a lot of these long shows, and I appreciate it. Why are Canadians so funny? You know, uh, funny, funny, funny involves two things. It involves truth and intelligence. And the Canadians or anybody, anybody funny is they've got those two qualities going for themselves. They know the truth and they're intelligent enough to twist it or make it uh, so funny that, that you lessen any negative impact. That's how you, that's how you disarm anybody or anything or any situation if you find the humor in it uh, you can disarm anything you know you can keep yourself from getting killed if you can mm -hmm. find the, the humor in it and uh <clears throat> and and that's why the canadians uh, plus in, in canada it's a no bullshit country you know down mm -hmm. here you can pretend a lot you know in, in new york you can pretend a lot but up in canada you don't pretend you know Everything is real, and uh, and your stupidity is real too. You know, if, if you are, you know, whatever, if you're stuck there, that's who you are. And you know, like a Guy Lombardo Orchestra. You know, uh, they, they, there's a lot of musicians on that orchestra that could play the fuck out of their instruments, but that's where they made the money. You know, that's where the food trough was. And and, and Canadians, for the most part, were realists. You know, if we don't do certain things, we don't get certain things. You know, you know, we have to go out and get it. You know, no one's going to sit, knock on your door and say, "Hey, Dan Aykroyd, hey, do you want a job uh, doing this or that?" No, no, you're going to auditions, you're going to uh, open mic nights, you're doing whatever the fuck you can do to, 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 to make it. And right. Canadians, uh, you know, hey, we invented hockey. That's how tough we are. There you go. If you want a scooter, you got to work for it. <laughs> That's it. Tommy, as always, it's been a delight. Uh, you okay. are the best. I, you were still my comedy hero. And just, I couldn't, I can't say enough for you. You've just been so gracious with your time. It's such a nice, real person. 
I guess that's Canadian in you. If you have anything you want to promote, and I encourage everybody to go to TommyJohn.com, all sorts of things going on. Uh, great uh, uh, belated Mother's Day gifts and Father's Day gifts and uh, birthday gifts, anything for uh, anybody. So promote away, whatever you got going on. Uh, you know, just whatever you find, whatever you're looking for with Tommy Chong on it, you know. I stand behind everything, and if it's making money, I really push the shit out of it, you know. So whatever whatever makes anybody feel Google good, Tommy that's what Chong I want to do. I just want to make everybody feel good. If you, you get my CBD, it'll make you feel good. If you do any of my videos, it'll make you feel good. So I'm a feel-good guy. I, you absolutely are. And, uh, Nicole, uh, tell everybody, everybody how they can find you on social media and about your new poetry book. Um, well, you can find me at Nicole Six Books on Instagram, Nicole H Six on Facebook, and then go to lulu.com, l u l u.com, and search Nicole Six, and you'll find my latest book. Okay, bye. We're gonna send we're gonna send you a copy, Tommy. I'm Goth Comedian okay. on all social media. Thanks a lot. You have a wonderful night. Everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. <laughs>